As you might suspect, a message bean requires less code than one returning to the client. There's only one method that can be called, and that method always has the same name, and there are never any return values to deal with. So there are no interfaces to write. All you need is the source file of the bean and a single XML configuration file. This is the source code of a message bean named LogWriterBean. You should be familiar with most of all of this by now. Here are some new classes in the import statements. These are the necessary classes and interfaces from the JEMS package for Java message beans. These two interfaces must be implemented. The message driven bean interface defines the callback methods that are used by the container. The message listener interface defines the on message method, and that's the one that's called to deliver the message to the bean. Like the beans we looked at earlier, this one also has a context object. The message driven context is like the session context object and the entity context objects of session and entity beans. It can be used by the bean to talk to the container. Now it isn't absolutely necessary, but if your bean is going to talk to the container, then you need this. Now this method is called exactly once at the very beginning of the life of the bean to pass the context object to the bean. The EJB create method is called once when the bean is first created. It's normal not to do anything here, but you may want to open the database or some other one-time action. For example, if this bean were actually maintaining a log file, you could make sure the file exists. You might even want to check the property settings to get the name of the file, whatever. When EJB create is called, the context, by the way, has already been set. The EJB remove method is called when the bean is about to be destroyed. Now normally a message bean is put into a cache and saved like an entity bean, but it can be used again. Sometimes there are just too many beans in the cache and some of them will be destroyed and there will be a call to this method. Now this is the method that's called when a message arrives. The argument to it is a message object, or more accurately, it's the subclass of a method object. You'll need to check and see what kind of message object it is. This is a test for a text message, but it could be a map message, a bytes message, an object message, or a stream message, as well as a text message. This code is inside a try catch block because an exception can be thrown by the methods of the message objects. Different types of messages can throw different types of exceptions, so this block is just set up to catch a general exception. And that's all there is to the Java code of a message bean. There are no interfaces to implement. There are some special tags that are used in the XML file. This is the XML file that's included in the jar file with the bean. The naming of the bean class is done much the same way it was done in the other types of beans. For a message bean, you have to specify its transaction is controlled by the container. And this is where you specify the class that is to handle the incoming message delivery style. It's either topic or queue. And that's, that's it. There's no local view and no remote view. That's all handled by the container. The application never actually talks directly to the bean. Any other configuration settings that need to be made are made by the deploy tool of whatever server you happen to be using.